Well, Spurs did say that all Israeli flags and banners would be removed, as will any other flags or banners that would be considered inflammatory. There were at least seven Israeli flags that I saw being held up inside the stadium. Spurs have a long-standing association with the Jewish community. It's meant their supporters have felt it keenly, and some were always intent on showing their support tonight. Ange Postacoglu attempted to negotiate what was a difficult issue by suggesting that the stadium should be a place where people can come together and show their support for the team and take away from whatever troubles they may have. Well, his team have certainly provided escapism for their supporters. Eight wins, six, six wins, 18 goals, 20 points, and tonight they can put a bit of daylight between themselves and the rest. Ali McCoyst is alongside me. Spurs ooze excitement. How did Fulham take the wind out of their sails? Well, it's interesting how they started the game. They had four men in the left-hand side. They rolled it back and played a diagonal. So if it's a statement of intent that they're going to have a right go, then that's certainly the way to, the way to go about it. But I expect they're going to have to defend well, Sam. They're going to have to defend very, very well against a Spurs team that we've already mentioned. They're full of confidence and they're going to have to take any chances. But by the looks of things, the way they're setting up, Williams high on that side Vinicius high in the right as well it looks as though they're going to Pereira through the middle it looks as though they're going to play with a high line and perhaps press Spurs high up the park certainly looks to be the case Spurs in white shirts white shorts and socks and it's the sort of uh, grey and pink mix with pink trim and black backs of Fulham attacking the goal away to our right hand side the huge raking south stand which is away to our right side the ball pops off the Midfielder Lukic and into the path of Richarlison. High on the left-hand side for Spurs. They attack the goal away to our left. Across comes the defender and puts it out. Polina and away for a throw-in midway inside Fulham territory. Spurs' most recent win, the one that took them top of the table at Luton, saw them start like a train, but they missed key chances and had the Sumer sent off and made harder work of it than was necessary. Here's Son trying to make... Uh, short shrift of Polina but Polina watched him all the way and nudged him off the ball won it back for Fulham and tied it up before releasing the ball forward it's a little bit scrappy in midfield won by Saar then Madison's released Son tried to go past the goalkeeper and Leno's made a terrific save and then the referee Anthony Taylor has pulled it back for a foul after playing the initial advantage alley which is strange in itself however because he's let it go and it's a real opportunity goalie does exceptionally well because Son was wanting to go around him here Son wanted to take the ball around him but Leno Put, the, put his body weight down the wrong hand wrong, the bigger part on the right hand side to cover that and he's tried to lift it over stuck his leg out good goalkeeping excellent goalkeeping is that good refereeing? no I, I think once he lets it go he's got to let it go Spurs had the advantage yes. to take it yes I mean if he scores it's brilliant refereeing and he's continued to give him an opportunity so I, I don't think he should be bringing that back myself free kick then for Spurs and it's going to be taken about 10 yards outside the penalty area it's a shade left of centre and standing over it Pedro Porro the right fullback and James Madison who we know is a specialist from this sort of range he loves a dead ball situation he's placed it down and he's eyeing up the three man wall he approaches it right footed and plays it left into a doggy who I think wasn't expecting it caught him out slightly his touch was heavy it bounced off him really and although it may have been well choreographed on the training ground it didn't translate to the playing surface no I think to be fair to Udogi he wanted it slightly forward to take it on his left foot rather than slightly behind him to take it on his right getting back to the point with the referee and Anthony Taylor I'm just wondering did he blow the whistle before the ball got played through to so on the first yeah, yeah that's a possibility uh, it's still nil nil he played three and a half minutes you're listening to Talk Sport Fulham's last game was their victory over Sheffield United and as Adrian was saying he was there for that match it took them a little while to get the opener and they benefited from a, a balmy Tom Kearney goal in that game as well but it's uh, another victory for Marco Silva he's racked up coming into this fixture and his team certainly had the better of the game between the two although it was much altered teams in the Carabao Cup Tottenham have the ball on the halfway line and Christian Romero the Argentine stroking it forward takes it wide towards the right it's received back to him from Pap Sar, and then William on the press tries to unsettle Romero and it goes all the way back to Guillermo Vicario and Tottenham will build again it was very narrow Fulham I mean they look quite solid defensive a little bit of a Charleston out on the left hand side 
is well open for a quick switch of play Van der Ven carrying the ball up the field of play almost ran out of room but kept hold of it well and then drifts the ball back to one of their furthest deepest players in James Madison he does have licence to play where he wants I think uh, a doggy picks it up coming in field off that left flank then charges forward releases Richarlison who's in the left wing position he takes on the defender and springs across into the centre it's headed away by Tim Ream and then back down towards Madison who hoists the ball forward away by Ream again met by Saar there might have been a handball there although there's an offside flag up over on the far side which preceded that and it's going to be a free kick on the edge of the penalty area. One thing that Tottenham do really well I think is they allow Madison to have yeah. room and licence to go back and pick the ball up but when they attack they do it at such rapid pace. Excellent Sam I've got to say he's got a lot more freedom than obviously the vast majority if not all the, the Tottenham players but if he is your chief playmaker you want him on the ball it makes sense as often as quickly as possible and that's what Spurs try to do. Here is Papsar, who's excelled in midfield for Tottenham so far this season. Hoybier, who hasn't had too many minutes and struggled, actually, uh, with the Denmark team. You're not going to believe this. They struggled to beat San Marino two in one, the international one, break. 2-1. Two, 2-1. One. Two, one. I saw the celebrations of San Marino go. <laughs> it's <was> fantastic. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. He's to make his debut at the age of 40 in that game for San Marino. Here is a doggy down the left-hand side, trying to get towards the edge of the penalty area. Duckled over Reed wrestles him to the floor. Collected by Richarlison. Back in field it goes. It's with Hoybier now, trying to turn... Uh, it's full and back behind the ball and in good shape almost in a 4-4-2 formation as they sit behind the ball but a doggy has drifted in again from that left side little swivel by Madison he's brought down by Polinia and it's another free kick just in front of the penalty area away to our left hand side for Spurs it's brilliant from Madison Sam he just lets the ball come across him you see it here takes a touch away from Polinia he sticks a left leg out you could argue he's very fortunate not to pick up a yellow card because it was quite cynical well, he does pick up quite a few yellow cards. Yeah. <laughs> he collects them like they're football stickers. And uh, has to often serve a suspension as a result of that. He got 14 yellow cards last season in the Premier League. That takes some doing, actually. <laughs> well, he used to. I've got to say, I mean, in all seriousness, stating the obvious, that's too many. <laughs> <laughs> Madison with a free kick towards the far post flicked by Romero into the centre and sent goalwards and over the bar by Van der Ven yeah. who got his first goal against Luton and maybe should have had his second there centre-back's finished from East Sam he's got to keep it down ball comes across him Romero has a lovely header back so change of option to set play Madison plays it kind of back post and he comes in Van der Ven and the way his body shape is is always going high always going over he's got to try and go over it it's not a side foot finish it's an instep into the ground. We'll let him off. Centre half though. And Sart into uh, Kulisevsky, who spins the ball out to the right side, and then Polo goes down just on the edge of the penalty area. Anthony Taylor's giving himself some time, and he's given a free kick right on the perimeter of the box. Now, then it's about geography and whether or not it was inside the penalty area. Anthony Robinson, who was the uh, party on the edge of the box who was guilty was the one who made the foul I think it was outside the box I agree I think he catches his foot there definitely a free kick without doubt Robinson catches him but I actually think it is maybe about a foot outside the box well Anthony Taylor I gave himself some thinking time there and yeah. communication time with his officials over on the far side Gary Bezik and decided eventually that he made the right decision that it was a free kick and I think the replay suggests that that's correct. I think so. I think he's spot on. I think he's got it 100% correct. They'll probably have a look at it, which they're entitled to do, but no. I think he stands on his foot, and I think it's outside the box. Good call with the referee. Good referee. And good football by Spurs. And correct. the pace of Porro actually unsettling the... Uh, At least another one, defense. Sam. We've spoke about it. I mean, Porro, you know, Van der Ven, Udoge, these guys are now... They're, they're just, they're, 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 there's a freshness about them. There's a belief. There's an enthusiasm. They're doing everything at pace. Well, here's the free kick then. And, and once again, Madison is standing over it. Kulisevsky has gone across too. Not sure it's perfect for Madison from that sort of angle to get a shot on goal, but you wouldn't rule anything out. There's a four-man wall. And now the draft excluder. And it's going to be left for Kulisevsky to strike after a little touch from Madison. Takes a deflection, runs into the air. A doggy trying to keep it alive. He does that and the Fulham fans aren't happy they thought he was offside the uh, linesman on the far side didn't flag and Spurs retain possession 
just in front of the centre circle. Nine minutes gone, it's Tottenham Hotspur nil, Fulham nil. You're live on TalkSport tonight, game night on TalkSport with Sam Matterface, Ali McCoist. We're here right the way through to the conclusion of this game, bringing you yet another Tottenham Hotspur fixture. Here is Kulisevsky wandering on the far side, delivers the ball in towards the box. The referee eventually blows the whistle off. The flag went up over on the far side. I must admit, I was looking at the deepest central defender thinking, is he? So was I. But clearly he's got a better view of this than we have. Must be the little reverse ball here. We're just about to see it. Yes. That is a great call. It's a great call. It is just tight, but That's it's a good call. That's you and I firmly put in our place again. <laughs> <laughs> not for the first time and not for the last, I wouldn't have thought. Uh, Spurs uh, have had a good start to the season, but it is worth noting, I think, that they've played most of their games in the Premier League away from home mm. so far this season. So they haven't been able to uh, show off Ange ball to their supporters as often as maybe they would like. But whenever it has been here, the atmosphere has been terrific this season. Calvin Bassey almost getting himself into a tight spot on the edge of his own box as Fulham looked to play out. Leno makes sure that it's further clear. Held up by Vinicius. William with a really good switch out to the right side and galloping forward at pace. His decor over Reed on the edge of the area. First time ball in towards the near post. They couldn't quite reach it and it goes behind and away and out for a corner kick. Sasa Lukic was the one bursting into the box and Decor Dovery might think he should have done better to find him. Probably should have. I'm not sure that uh, the run was really committed either. Good defending, you've got to say, from there coming over. A really bright attack and a beautiful switch of play from Willian to release uh, Cordova in the right-hand side. Corner on the near touchline to be taken by Andreas Pereira. There's six shirts to aim at in Fulham colours and Pereira tries to pick one out and it's Pellini who he does pick out it's a brilliant save down to his left by the goalkeeper Vicario springing out and jettisoning out a left arm which produced a stunning save they pulled up the play for a foul I think on Hoybier but that was a great chance and a really powerful header I'll tell you what it's a brilliant save he's a little bit I don't want to take anything away from the goalkeeper he's a little bit fortunate it's a good height for him the, I mean he's under pressure but what a save it is I'm, I'm, I'm probably doing him a disservice here it's a brilliant save I'm just saying if it's a foot low on the deck it's probably a goal but what a save there from Vicario £20 million pounds from Empoli in the last two seasons he's made more saves than any other goalkeeper in Serie A and he's got the best save ratio in this league this season well that's certainly another one for the scrapbook because that was a brilliant save good delivery in and a good header a great header under pressure do you think they keep scrapbooks now or do you think they just oh, I don't you know, probably show me here Sam it's, it's poor <laughs> sticks them it together yeah. on apps <laughs> <laughs> keep it on their phones peruse their saves at their leisure <laughs> oh. that's it God. you're listening to talk sport I can, I can hear all the younger listeners scrapbook that man's lost it <laughs> <laughs> we all used to have them though didn't we emphasis on the word used yeah <laughs> uh, Anthony Taylor just pausing play because uh, there was a free kick to Fulham inside their own half and it was uh, kicked long by Fulham but not taken from the right place Calvin Bassey is getting the opportunity to take it again it's just short of halfway uh, no, I'm so looking at them Sam look at them ready to pounce look yeah. at the three look at Madison Son and the Charles on the left hand side here it's almost like they're on the starters block yeah. as soon as the ball's kicked they're off and sprinting forward and trying to win it and they've won it back inside their own half but Charleston is then hauled down by Timothy Castagna who is seen as the heir apparent to uh, Kenny Tete he's out once again with injury free kick given Madison wants to get it moving and does and plays it square just short of the centre circle is Romero inside his own half he's got support from Hoybier and then left of him is Mickey van der Ven who made his debut for the Dutch in the international break. Across it goes to Romero, back out to Pap Sarr, and Tottenham keeping possession here. 13 and a half gone on talks for Ali will be back on breakfast with Andy Townsend. And uh, don't worry, I'm going to make sure they get back to the hotel at a reasonable time. We're all travelling together back from the stadium tonight. That's for sure. I'll put you to bed and tuck you up. <laughs> That'll do for me. <laughs> it's the other fail I'm more concerned about. <laughs> uh, often one to lead us astray. Here is Romero halfway. Crowd trying to get the noise up to encourage Tottenham to just to produce a little bit more zip. But they're happy to keep hold of the ball here without Fulham putting too much pressure on them. Just holding off that press down, Fulham. Here on the left is Madison who drags the 
pass forward into uh, the feet of Bassi instead of Son and it's half cleared and then up to the halfway line and Tottenham have got it back again Romero steps forward again they're allowing them to have it up to the halfway line Fulham and then they've got the front two Pereira and Vinicius and then a bank of four followed by the back four Tottenham trying to find a way through at this moment not able to do so there's a bit of space for Richarlison on this near side but the play taking place on the right and then Hoybier plays it to Papsar and now they look to shift it Van de Ven looks up plays it left and now Richarlison has got it and his ball forward is poor hits the defender Castagna goes out for a throw in I'm looking at a doggy starting position as well when Tottenham have got it and they're kind of back three he's actually playing in a kind of left hand side of a number 10 position he's, yeah. he's so far up the pitch Sam it's incredible and that has been his role for most of the season yeah. he's almost played in that sort of inside left corridor in opposition territory because they have so much of the ball he's yeah. almost at times part of the front three Perhaps up, right side. Little flick around the corner from Porro doesn't quite come off. Polinia will win it here and just shuttle it forward into Pereira, whose ball is behind Robinson. Didn't quite get it right. It goes out of play. It's away for a Tottenham throw. And at this moment in time, Fulham can't get a kick. Romero, 15 and a half gone. Nil-nil on talk sport. Managers have been known to verbalise dissatisfaction when their fixtures have been moved. But Ange Postacoglu actually said his preparations may have been helped by the shift to Monday night this week with those coming back from international duty Romero one of those that was in South America lifts the ball forward but gives it straight to Castagna that ball's on the team on all the team Sam Castagna did well there but because of Udogi's position and sometimes Maddy's position in that left hand side it's forcing Castagna to, to go in more central and it's allowing the space for a switch of play interesting though as soon as that ball was flicked off Castagna Bassi picked it up on the edge of his own penalty area and immediately he was being pressed, but being pressed by the left fullback, a doggy. They've won a free kick over on the far side, Fulham, after Anthony Robinson was spelled, and it's going to be a free kick just short of halfway. And Polinia will take it. Tim Ream has it now. Ball played square. Iwobi, who was left out of the team, is sitting on the uh, bench tonight, all wrapped up, very warm in a big puffer jacket, and he's hood up at this moment in time. Iwobi's picked it up far side and he's starting to come forward of course he could have joined Spurs reports say he even did a medical here before being nabbed by Chelsea and that's why he's getting booed I think his association with Chelsea and Arsenal probably doesn't help he's been booted to the floor by Kulusevski over on the far side it's going to be a free kick which I think it was I know it didn't uh, get in too well with the home crowd but I definitely think it was Tottenham going to try and defend with a really well, high, a high line, line isn't it? Dear yeah. me. It's about eight, nine yards outside of the penalty area. And it's played square initially by Andreas Pereira. Lukic's ball is charged down by Madison, and there's a chance to counter attack if Spurs could get this ball forward. They can't. And now Robinson has headed it into the right wing position for Castagna to chase, and he's out muscled a doggy. He's got inside the uh, right corridor, sends the cross into the near post, and Vinicius heads it well wide of the goal. And there was an opportunity there, and maybe he might have been better served sending it to the back edge of the penalty area where their other runners were available. Yeah, he did exceptionally well initially, I've got to say. The out muscle the doggy, gets himself his half yard to put the cross in. He chose to go near post. Probably the wrong decision. But good play initially, as I said. There's Madison getting that wee hole again. Trying to poke it down the left side and. Charlison's on the sprint, his low ball takes a deflection, it's feathered away by Bassi, chested down by Dekordova Reed, and Lukic trying to escape, he's beaten to it by Son, he's had a bit of a tough start Lukic, ball played square for Kulisevsky, the interception comes from Robertson, and that sends Willian away, he nudges it into the path of Vinicius, but Nicky Van run. De Ven... Sam, it's a poor run from Vinicius, he's got to stay and clear that area, I mean... I, I mean, Robertson's clearly making the overlap there into a good space, and, he, and, and nine times out of ten, the pass will come to him from from Willian. But I, I don't know for the life of me where Vinicius is going there. He's got to peel to the back post and take the, the, the defender the opposite way. 
And he's got literally no chance of keeping up with Mickey van der Ven either because oh, he's no. got baguette, baguette speed, oh, hasn't he? Late. Not spaghetti, baguette, yeah. Bugatti. I mean. <laughs> I've got my tongue around the I believe, spaghetti, I, think, I believe there's a big difference. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. When it's in front of me, it goes down quite fast. <laughs> 20 minutes gone. Bassi forward. Switch towards the far side. William coming forward for Fulham. Tries to get into the penalty area. He skips past Poro on the edge of the box. Tries to get onto his right foot. Plays it behind Lukic. Kept alive by Castagna sort of ran into no man's land there William really clipped the ball at uh, Tim Ream out to the far side and Robinson and they're still on the attack here Robinson's got it back after a 1-2 it's ball into the centre it's blocked by Romero it's out for a corner to Fulham 20 gone 0-0 nil -nil. enough, really bright enough they've not had a lot of possession the opening 20 minutes Fulham but they can certainly look dangerous on the counter William's brilliant at that you know Sammy you know he's going to do it he feints the ball left he's just the speed of, of his feet are so quick coming back onto the right hand side that he gets away with it 9 times out of 10 Corner to be taken by Pereira, who delivers the ball right under the goalkeeper, who just puts his arms up in the air, grabs it and bowls it out. And very quickly, Tottenham are on the attack from the Fulham corner. Running down the left is Kulisevsky, the Swede. He uh, actually got only halfway inside the Fulham half before Fulham got so many numbers back. And a frustration from the Tottenham fans that they haven't moved the ball quick enough to actually take advantage well, of that I was going to ask you Sam I thought the challenge should have broke his neck on the right hand side because Son had brought all the play and the defenders to the left I thought he could have broke his neck to get forward on the right hand side for a switch of play I do feel like he's lacking in a little bit of confidence and maybe that's clouding his judgement at times the doggy thinks he should have been uh, given a free kick the referee hasn't called time then, Van, uh, then Romero who is never short of a confrontation if it comes available gets involved with Vinicius and the referee has to pull them apart the doggy is uh, just being checked on I don't think he's been given a free kick I think it'll be a uncontested drop ball here he certainly shows his studs in the tackle Polina I don't think he catches him right on although the doggy's reaction might tell me differently but he's, but he's, I thought he was certainly showing the studs there a little bit did look a little bit uh, aggressive let's put it that way um, we've uh, played nearly a quarter of the game so far still nil nil the best save of the game has been made by Guillermo Vicario Leno's made one two from Son it's been one big chance apiece so far and it remains goalless the ball is on the right side with Carlos Vinicius who was once of Spurs on loan from Benfica has got five goals in his last ten appearances five goals and three assists so far this season he had a uh, strong end to last campaign Those goals really mostly coming in the uh, last campaign. And here's a player who uh, has struggled in front of goal, but uh, has done a little bit better than uh, Raul Jimenez so far this season. And that has been a massive problem for Fulham in terms of putting goal ball in the back of the net. They uh, failed to secure a big budget replacement for Mitrovic. Jimenez hasn't scored a top flight goal since March 2022 here is Son what tucking the pass. ball back what to what a pass from Madison fires it, right into, fires it right into Son it's a great pass by Madison is still building on the right side back to the right it goes to Poro and now Son takes it over gets to the byline tries to reverse the ball into the path of Kulisevsky away by Robinson picked up on the edge of the area by Madison who weaves his way past two challenges tries to take on a third keeps it alive despite attention from Robinson wide right it goes low ball into the near post away by Tim Ream and then headed away and down by Hoybier as Tottenham try and keep the pressure on 23 gone nil-nil the score Hoybier forward Madison again conducting things dictating from the middle Son tries to feed Richarlison Bassi is there attempts to clear Vinicius tries to hold on to it manages to bring the ball away pokes it right side Decord over Reed is challenged by a doggy it goes out on this near side it's a Tottenham Hotspur pro one thing I want to say about the Madison's passing there Sam he turns and he fires it in 
with a lot of pace into Son there are a couple of things that does it makes Son concentrate in the touch which ha- which has to be good when he's receiving the ball but it also lifts the entire tempo of the move and the, and the pass itself creates that movement and the, the, the speed in, the, in, t- in terms of the play just rises instantaneously I see a doggy again trying to get down that left hand side and into an advanced position didn't come off for him this time but he is unsettling that uh, Fulham back line because of his position ball has been worked forward by Fulham who now on the attack with William he moves forward then just slows up the attack as Tottenham are allowed to get back into shape on this right hand side the ball uh, could have come to Dekord over Reed. Saka Lukic decided to shoot instead and I think it's still rolling towards the goal line yeah again I'm looking at the movement from Carlos Vinicius there it, it, I'm looking at me it looks to get dragged to the ball all the time I think sometimes as a centre forward you've actually got to go away from the ball and position yourself the opposite side of a centre back where he can't see you're out his eye line and in between the other full back it looks as though he just gets dragged to the ball quite a lot how does he avoid doing that what should Marco Silva do to correct it well when the, when the, when the ball's for example on, on, on the left hand side of the, of the pitch my you know a centre forward line, I think sometimes you've got to drift to the opposite to the right hand side of the pitch and position yourself in between the full back and the centre back so that the other centre back you're out his eye line and then you can go short or you can spin in behind I just think he's got it in his game he can do it but I just think at this moment in time he's just getting a wee bit dragged to the ball a little bit you're listening to Tottenham Hotspur nil, Fulham nil on Talk Sport with Now and don't forget that with Now you can stream all the Sky Sports action like Tottenham versus Fulham live right now for 11 99 no contract search Now Sports tomorrow morning when you wake oh dear that's a mistake by Vicario he's giving it straight to William as he attempts to play out from the back it's fallen to Pereira inside the box now left side they're trying to scramble back into position Tottenham as Fulham look to build the attack Polinia swings it from left side to right Castagna under pressure the one thing Tottenham have done is they've protected their goalkeeper really well there after making a mistake didn't half they got back and smothered the attempted Fulham attack yeah, and Porro and Hoiberg were excellent in doing that did the goalkeeper a big favour there Madison on halfway still waiting for our first goal in this game Tottenham have had a lot of the ball so far in it dominated possession they've looked the most likely but Fulham have had a big chance as well here's Son in the number 10 position moving it out towards the left he finds Richarlison now who runs up against the defender and then pokes it in Phil Madison just wide Hoybier with a strike straight down the throat of the goalkeeper I'm going to take Son it's, it's great play all round but again it's Madison what he does he takes the ball into the feet and it's only a simple pass of maybe two feet maybe a yard at the, but the timing of it for him to hit directly Hoiberg to hit he just sucks in the opponent def- opposition defender and creates a little bit of space that he knows Hoiberg can hit it first time it was that wonderful little pause that moment yes, just waiting exactly. and then as Pereira went across to him he just with beautiful weight of pass Can laid I... it into Pierre Hoybier and he smacked it goalwards and he could hit it first time as a result of that it was straight at Bert Menno and he was able to make the save Vinicius and Romero are starting to get very well acquainted we mentioned earlier on that Jao Polinia liked a card well Christian Romero queues up outside Clinton's before it opens <laughs> Yeah, you can just feel it between those two, can't you? Yeah. There's something. There's trouble brewing. Richarlison felt he was fouled. The referee said no. Castagna not penalised and play continues. They're on the halfway line. And Fulham have possession. 28 gone. It's into Dekod over Reed, who looks to spin behind the doggy. Headed away by Polinia. And then back towards the right. Dekord over Reed trying to get the better of uh, Richarlison and <laughs> they're still wrestling for the ball and Dekord over Reed puts it out in the way for a throw in it's interesting isn't it with Richarlison because you know that there is talent yeah. in his in his boots but he hasn't been able to replicate it for some while now I mean since the World Cup really how do you unlock that I, think, I, 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 I agree with all your sentiments there I, th- I just think he, he can be a very frustrating player I really do as you say there's, there's nobody doubting there's a player in there extreme talent 
I just don't think we see it enough. Marco Silva was the man who signed him for Watford to bring him to English football. Says he's got a lot of time for him as Robinson skates past Kulisevsky and then looks to outpace Porro, lays the ball back into the penalty area as he tried to cut it back from the byline. Easily cut out by Spurs and they look to move forward at pace. Swung by Madison out towards the right. Kulisevsky galloping, takes it in his stride, moves towards the angle of the penalty area, cuts in on his left foot, needs a decoy. Richarlison is there and sends the shot wide in the post. What an effort, what a chance, what a well-crafted move. It just didn't have to finish, and Richarlison looks to the heavens once again. But I said to Ed before the game, Sam, where did that chance come from? I actually came from a Fulham attack, gave the ball away. Spurs broke magnificently well, cool it, the ball into Madison, who released Kulosevsky. was absolutely terrific. The whole play overall was general. Kulosevsky caught in from his right foot. He was looking for Madison, didn't, who made a great run, waited on Richarlison. Probably that move deserved the goal, it really was. That was a big chance. Yeah, such was the frustration of uh, Ange Postacoglu that he stood there with his hands in his rain back and spread it out wide. Uh, here is uh, Madison, forward towards Son, takes it well, then shoots, takes a little deflection off Tim Ream, but I think it was a rushed effort, really. There was a little bit more room to manoeuvre there. Again, they moved the ball such pace through the middle of the park, through the thirds and up into Son, usually via Madison. A doggy was involved in that as well. But when he got the ball on the edge of the penalty area there, I think he had a little bit more time. Well, Sam, again, I'm saying that the James Madison, James Madison fan club here, I make no apology for it. He looked as though he was going to play it to Kulosevsky and just at the last minute puts his foot round it and fires it again into Son's feet. And I saw him again, you're right, probably a little bit more time and should have got a better shot away. Papsar down the right, tries to take on Polinia, who edges him out. The ball goes out of play and away for a goal kick away to our left-hand side. That James Madison fan club, I think, has picked up a few extra members over the last uh, few weeks and months. Yeah, he's been terrific, he really has. Even today, I'm, 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 I'm enjoying his, his uh, performance the first half hour or so. You can just see, he takes it differently as well. A couple of things on the half turn. And he's always looking forward, Sam. The first thing he does, he looks forward. I remember talking to Graham soon as Graham, he loves a midfield player who the first thing he does looks forward. Oh, Son, brilliant. Little drag back and move to get the ball into space, into Madison. There's so many good technicians on this Tottenham team. He runs at Calvin Bassey, slips it left for Richarlison. First time ball is stopped by Castagna. Breaks wide for Udogi and still Tottenham are putting the pressure on. But goalless after 32 minutes at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Here is Richarlison, lovely little intelligent ball. A doggy tries to pull it back. Does it hit the arms of Bassi who went sliding to the floor? Well, the referee is looking at that with uh, any menace and it's cleared away by Fulham. But the move was great and this time it was Richarlison's ball round the corner for a doggy who made a brilliant inside run that set up the chance. Well, they've given it away again, Fulham. And now Kulisevsky has it. But Paulinho is there to put out the fire. It's a brilliant tackle. And it sets Willian away. And he's got Pereira floating to his left. He feeds him now, Pereira. But it's just a little bit too close to delivery to Romero, who brings it away. Listen, it's a poor ball from Willian. Flip side of the coin. It's good defending from Romero. But Willian should not allow Romero the opportunity to get to intercept that pass that was a big chance a good break for Fulham real opportunity to at least get a shot in target and they should have but didn't 33 gone Hoybier sends it wide now Kulisevsky takes on and moves towards the edge of the area takes on that room Robinson who drives him backwards rather than forwards Sarp in the middle of the park being watched by Decordova Reed William trying to engage with Pedro Porro causes a real problem I think for Fulham when those two fullbacks come in inverted into the middle of the Fulham half of the field a doggy is one of those he's picked it up right on the edge of the area inside left out to Richarlison he pokes it forward Son lots happening on the edge of the box here Madison weaving his way in getting a shot away low and hard but saved easily by the goalkeeper double step over excellent step over the right step over to the left defender buys the one to the left gets himself his wee half yard again excellent excellent comfortable save right enough for Leno well the ball did strike the arm of Calvin Bassey but I think even in uh, the current climate that would go down as a natural position for the arm yeah
by the look in Adrian's face there, I think we'll be talking about that one at half time, Sam, just to warn you. He doesn't think it was natural. You are allowed, if you're sliding in, to put your arm on the floor, actually. Um, that's in the guidance. Although his arm actually was by his side yeah. as he went to uh, drive it. Why are you looking at me like that for? You are, you're allowed to put it down just to break your fall. That's in, that's in the guidance. Although saying that, I think there was a decision that was given against Lewis Dunk earlier in the season in the game against Luton, which sort of was given despite the fact that yeah. his arm was behind him when he was sliding in. I think they apologised for that, the PGMOL. Here is uh, Kulisevsky looking to feed Son, cut out by Ream on the edge of the penalty area. Ten minutes to go before half-time. Uh, collected by Saar, and there's a foul given. And uh, it's going to be Hoybier on uh, William, which generates the first yellow card of the game, 35 in. And it's Pierre-Emil Hoybier who picks up the first booking of the night. Uh, don't know why he goes in, he goes to ground. He doesn't make any contact, to be quite frank with you, Sam, but as soon as he goes to ground, he gives the referee the option to yellow card him, which he duly obliged. Was he not trying to pull out of that challenge? I think he was, yeah, but as soon as you go to ground, he slid in. Oh, oh Richarlison into Son, edge of the area, skips past the challenge, right footed into the far corner, and Tottenham Hotspur lead! Free of the shadow of Tottenham's greatest goal scorer, Son Heung-min is revelling in the spotlight. It's a terrific finish, of which Harry Kane will be proud. It's goal number 50 at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium for Son Heung-min. And Spurs finally have their lead against Fulham. It's 1-0. Ah, oh, what a finish. It really is. I don't know what Fulham are doing defensively. Abashi gets caught in the right-hand side there, plays the ball in. It's a poor ball in. They're all out of position. They really are. Tim Reams over the other side, playing him on side. He tries to step out. He gets back across. But it's too late. It's absolutely too late. It's a poor ball in, overhit, and Son is effectively left in the middle of goal himself. Ream comes across, tries to block him, he doesn't, cuts back onto his right foot, and the execution is magnificent, absolutely magnificent. He curls it into Leno's top left-hand corner. Beautiful finish. Excellent finish from Spurs' point of view. Bit of a disaster for Fulham, I've got to say. 50th goal at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium on his 99th appearance. That's some record. No, it's, it's excellent. He's a, he's a top player, Sam. He really is a top player. So in that respect, it's absolutely no surprise. It's a brilliant finish for Son. And the assist goes to Richarlison, who fed him. Here is uh, Kulisevsky. But maybe it should go to Calvin Bassi, because it was his ball which caused the problems yeah. initially. He, he's tried to play into the middle of the park, and he's overhit it. But the problem is because the centre-backs are split to take the ball off the goalkeeper once they lose it it comes back into Son and reams out in the left-hand pick left-hand side and it's too difficult he does eventually get across but he's easily sidestepped by Son that's the problem the gap between the two centre-backs I know they've split to take the ball off the goalkeeper but it ends up posing the problem Richarlison now has it after Bassi I think maybe handballed it on the edge of the penalty area Son didn't see uh, William coming behind Porro when he played him the ball but Tottenham win the ball back brilliantly and Richarlison diving in to win it back and turn it over high up Saar comes forward edge of the area they've got a bit between their teeth now Tottenham 37 gone 1-0 ball into the box towards Son flick behind by Bassi and out for a corner well we're critical of him with the pass in the middle of the park quite the opposite there because if he doesn't get a touch on that it's a goal brilliant defending from Bassi excellent ball and swinging ball from Kulisevsky Son's just waiting on it Bassi gets the slightest of touches puts out for a corner but he had to do that had to be there well Bassi didn't like his last trip to North London he was sent off for two yellow cards at Arsenal not necessarily sure he's enjoying his latest trip here either corner kick to be taken by Madison away to our left hand side 38-9 on the clock you're listening to Talk Sport we're live at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium Madison in towards the near post flicked away by uh, Palinia it's won by Kulisevsky who tries to turn it back round the corner he's got Pereira for company flips it onto his left foot and then a little back heel into Romero who's in the right wing position now the central defender his cross is a deep one towards the edge of the box but it was headed away by Decordova-Reed 
And now a doggy will bring it forward. It remains 1 0 to Tottenham Hotspur. And I think maybe there was a few questions about how the Spurs midfield was going to function without Bissouma. So far, so good, yeah, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Hoiberg and Sarah have been fine in there. No problems at all. Rumble of noise you can hear is from the Tottenham fans. I think Spurs have been worthy of the lead, Sam, although you have to say Fulham haven't been out without their chances. Here's Madison, edge of the area, slips the ball down the left, a little back heel into a doggy's path by Son. It comes towards Kulisevsky, it's blocked by Pedro Porro. And it might have taken a flick off Anthony Robinson on the way through. But another chance carved by Tottenham Hotspurs. Quick slick play, which opened up what is now a creaking Fulham defence. Oh, that's a big chance. It's just, it's, they've got to be scoring that. It's a lovely ball, I've got to say. Beautiful ball from Madison into Son. Back flick into a doggy. They should be scoring it. It's a good block. Big chance, Kulisevsky will check the corner now. Over on the far side, I actually think it came off Polini, who I got in front did. of Pedro Porro. The ball goes in towards the near post, it's headed away, free header uh, by uh, Vinicius, it comes back the way by Pedro Porro, it took a flick on the way through, it's going to be another corner, it was well wide of goal. But it's a good spell for Tottenham, and if they can make this play before half-time, they may well take the game away from Fulham before we even get to the break. Yeah, I think we've reached the stage. Fulham are looking for half time. Marco Silva just want to get in there, one nothing down. I would think, just regroup of a chart with his players. Hoybier, left the side of the area, produces a cross from the short corner. Son couldn't bring it down, but nudges it to Kulisevsky. Tottenham not letting Fulham escape. Williams got it about five yards in front of his own box, and he tries to lead the charge away and get Fulham out. Pereira has it far side, but Spurs flex back into a defensive positions very well and so very quickly and they're such a well-organized team and they are going to trouble everyone I think this season when you look at Fulham they've had a, a very good season last year but their only wins so far have come against teams who began this weekend in the bottom five of the league here's William Farside moving up towards the edge produces a cross deep towards Decord over Reed, who heads it against the doggy and it goes out of play and away for a corner kick and the key there was, was actually Vinicius going to the back stick and then moving forward because he, he poses the doggy the problem. He had to go inside with him. I've got to say it's a chance. Got over reach, he'll probably be finding Vinicius with that header there. He didn't seem to have too much conviction in the header no. when it came over the top no. of the defender. He oh. can let it come off him rather than power it to him. I take your point. Here's the corner. Down in front of that raking south stand that goes up into the clouds behind the goal in this marvellously appointed stadium. It's Pereira's delivery, arcing towards the penalty spot, looking for Polinio, took a little flick, but uh, oh, Pereira is in an offside position when he received it. Now, if he had let that go, would it have gone out for a corner? I'm not sure. But by getting involved again, he ended up alerting the referee's attention, and as a result, it's a free kick to Tottenham Hotspur. Good thinking, that. I never thought about that myself. Yeah, he lets it go, they still get possession, they keep possession of the football. Tottenham... Lead Fulham by goal to nil. For the latest odds, you can head to Labrooks, where right now you can get Tottenham 7 to 1 on to win the game. Fulham 22 to 1. Uh, the draw 13 to 2. It's all thanks to Labrooks, ADM plus BigGamblerware.org. The traders at Labrooks don't have too much faith in the Fulham comeback here. I wonder if that's because they uh, have struggled so much in terms of scoring this season. Richarlison into the centre and he drifts the ball right towards the edge of the six-yard box and Pedro Porro came diving in and it eluded him by about an inch. Yeah, again, really enterprising play. I'm, I'm enjoying it. Madison goes back and take the ball in that left-back position and as soon as he does, the doggy goes right forward into high inside left position. They work it really well and ends up firing it into him. Another chance for Tottenham. Richarlison's hurt himself, trying to block a clearance from Castagna. And when I say that uh, Fulham haven't scored enough goals this season, only four teams before this weekend had scored fewer goals than the Cottagers. How are they going to get back into this game, Ali? Well, I think they're going to have to get to half-time and regroup. That's the first thing they've got to do. Um, still, you know, as long as it stays one nothing, clearly still in the game, Sam. And then you can change things. Probably, you know, possibly go more offensive as the game goes on. But at this moment in time, they're just going to have to weather this storm because that's what it is at this, this particular moment. Tottenham have been excellent the last 10, 15 minutes. And I'll say it again. You know, you'd think Fulham would just be looking for the half-time whistle at this moment in time. 
boys on the breakfast show already uh, mocking up a laminated membership card to the James Madison fan club for Ali McCoy for tomorrow morning he's on with Andy Townsend from 6am here's William picking the ball up edge of the Tottenham penalty area and losing control of it and the boos every time he picks up the ball I'm not saying they're affecting him but they certainly the boo boys are enjoying the fact that he hasn't had the best of 44 minutes up until now Tottenham play their way out of trouble really well Saar, Porro, Hoybier the ball infield to a doggy who's coming from left back to that central midfield position he's been dispossessed by Dekord Overy who's now run up to the edge of the box it's broken for Sasa Lukic then it's on towards Pereira he kicks it again to Romero it's loose the ball runs through towards Pap Saar who is challenged by Polinia but it's Romero who emerges with it and he moves at pace into the opposite half. He just slows things up as he gets to the edge of the penalty area. He turns and plays it into the channel. Kulisevsky inside the box, takes a step. They want too many passes, comes back to Madison. He tricks his way through and no one pulls the trigger as a result. Oh, oh dear me. I mean, <laughs> that particular attack, there's, there's at least four of them should have scored. Two minutes of added time at the end of the first 45. Tottenham at this moment in time running riots. Oh, that was unbelievable, Sam. How did they never get an attempt at goal? Defies logic. The brilliant reverse ball into Kulosevsky. You think he's got to score, then you think Madison's got to score. Dear me, what a chance. It was such a good ball from uh, Romero oh, into the lovely. path of Kulosevsky. Lovely. lovely pass. It does give you that as well. He likes to rampage forward as the centre-back from Argentina. And... Uh, Tottenham now just resting with the ball on halfway having possession Fulham at this moment in time getting a little frustrated Bobby Decordovery just throwing his arms up into the air he hasn't been uh, too impressed by what his teammates have been doing they've sort of not given up the press but they've sort of stopped being able to apply it with any real effectiveness as a doggy who's drifted in again on that left hand side picks up the ball plays it towards the edge of the penalty area Richarlison Hoybier on to Son the challenge with Bassi inside the penalty area and the referee's made a decision and I don't think it's the one that Tottenham want they want a penalty and uh, well I didn't think it was for Hoybier but I'm looking at Son's reaction he, he immediately thought it was a penalty Son immediately well, Richarlison plays the ball forward. Hoybier hips it on towards uh, Son. It then comes back to Hoybier, and he's challenged by Bassi, whose foot is high and doesn't make much contact with the ball. It's whether or not he'd already gone down and was, I think, maybe halfway on the floor before Bassi had yeah. completely committed to the challenge. No penalty is the decision, and we're underway again, so there will be no reset. I think uh, those in this stadium know more than, than most that once the uh, game restarts, you can't go back to a previous decision. William, over on the far side. Pereira, back to William again. They're midway inside Spurs territory, hugging the left touchline is the USA international Robinson. His floating ball headed away by Van de Ven, and then Richarlison scoops it over the head of Castagna went to chase after his own forward pass but Bassi got there first William wandering centrally plays it out of Castagna offside flag is up against Deckard over Reed but also another bit of foul there on Castagna in the build up to it it's a great line though Tottenham were kept defensively you know just allowing Deckard over Reed to get into that offside position it's a good line I think you're probably right with your assessment of the free kick Doggy on Castagna has been yep. penalised first and Pereira still uh, moaning at Anthony Taylor. And Deckard Overy would have been in an offside position had that not been given as a foul. Oh, they've gone back and given the offside. They haven't given Deckard Overy the foul. Well, that's bizarre because clearly the the offence, well, if it is an offence, takes place before the offside. Anyway, half time. And that is the end of the first half, which Tottenham will be pretty satisfied with. They've made their best start to a season since winning the double 63 years ago. And they will be returning to the top of the Premier League should they continue to win this game. Kim Min Song has his 50th goal at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. And what a goal it was to make it Tottenham 1, Fulham 0 at half-time. Yep, second half coming up live on game night on TalkSport as the players make their way towards the Tunnel Spurs. will be happy, but maybe they'll feel they should have had more Fulham. 
problem. I've got some rethinking to do. We'll get more from Ali McCoy's very shortly. Ali's back on air tomorrow at 6 a.m. on TalkSport Breakfast alongside Andy Townsend, who's also here at Spurs watching the game tonight. Some huge guests on the show this week, including World Cup winner Emmanuel Petit and another Gunners legend, Liam Brady, on breakfast this week. A lot of Arsenal there. Spurs fans, don't worry. They will also have Midu on the show as well, former Spurs striker. Uh, that is tomorrow morning. But here at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, for all the Madison magic, it was a cock-up from the Cottagers that's given Spurs the lead at half-time. Nice one, Son. The second half coming up on TalkSport. Monday game night on TalkSport with now. Stream all the Sky Sports action like Tottenham versus Fulham live tonight for 11 99 no contract. Search now sports. 18 plus stream via internet. Terms apply. Talk about a blast from the past. Ah, the 1990s. When McDonald's started using 100% British and Irish beef in our burgers. Back when you actually had to leave the house and head to the arcade if you wanted to play a game with your mates. What a time. It's just one of the little changes McDonald's have been constantly making to the way we source and produce our food over the years. McDonald's. Change a little, change a lot. We all fantasise about our perfect home. Watching the big game cosied up in the snug. Balmy summer nights with the kids playing on the lawn. We're playing my football! But come on, this isn't real. Listen, if you're serious about making your fantasy a reality, find out what your home is worth instantly with a free online valuation estimate. Get real about moving. Get on the market. Most common time to obtain an online quote between 1st of June 2022 and 30th of September 2022 is under three minutes. Excludes Northern Ireland. With the transfer window closed, it's now properly game on. Get the ultimate football coverage with the Suns' free pull-out goals. With the best writers pitch side for in-depth match reports, it's all about goals. And with unrivaled news from the Premier League to League Two, it has to be goals! Stay up to date on all the latest football action. Get your free copy of Goals every Saturday, Sunday and Monday only in the Sun. Rodri to De Bruyne, flicked on to Walker, goal! No one saw that coming! Or as we say in Japan, no The smart hawk hides its talents. For taste beyond expected, Asahi Super Drive, official beer partners of Manchester City. Enjoy responsibly. Visit drinkaware.co.uk. There will be 14 minutes of extra time. With Betfair's new 90-minute payout, you don't have to wait for the final whistle to celebrate. Because your winning bet will be paid out in full at 90 minutes. Betfair. Applies to match odds 90 market or markets with a 90 icon. Sportsbook exclusive. Terms and conditions apply. 18 plus. Be Y'all ready for something new? Oh, you thought it was just burgers and fries. They got more flavors than you tasted or you heard in your life. Yummy. It ain't only restaurants anymore. We can go bananas at the grocery store. I'm a bad girl, but my takeout. What you need, dude? I could cop a taco. Don't miss out on the mega Screwfix app giveaway where you could win a year's free shopping at Screwfix. There's also thousands of other prizes to be won, and every time you order on the app in October, you'll be entered. So you may find when you order some workwear, you might also get a holiday voucher, or ordering a toolbox might get you an Xbox. The Mega Screwfix app giveaway. Prizes are drawn every Monday. Download and order now. For full T's and C's, visit screwfix.com. Colossal football on a Monday night. Oh, and he's found it! Football commentary forged in fire and brimstone. Brilliant strike! This is game night on Talk Sports. Yeah, game night on Talk Sport. I'm Adrian Durham, and we are back at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium where Spurs lead Fulham in the Premier League by a goal to nil. And as it stands, Tottenham will be going back to the top of the Premier League table. 35 gone, and it was Hung Min Son who buried it really after Calvin Bassey's ball into midfield was easily won by Spurs. Richarlison to Son. And that is the goal that separates the two sides. Fulham have had a few chances, though Vicario forced into a magnificent save 
uh, in that first half. 12, minute, 12 minutes gone when he uh, pulled that one out of the bag. Brilliant from him. That's why the Spurs fans have really taken to the Italian keepers on the bench for Italy, actually, against uh, England last week. And a few other chances, some good play, of course, from the magic man, James Madison. And I think uh, Ali McCoyst has fallen in love with James Madison. We'll get more from Ali McCoyst uh, very shortly in this halftime period. And of course, second half commentary is coming up. Don't forget, kickoff tomorrow night starts at 6 p.m. on TalkSport 2. We'll uh, have live commentary from the Champions League for you. Uh, and of course, we will have live commentary on TalkSport 2 of the championship game between Leicester and Sunderland. But 6 p.m. kickoff gets underway on TalkSport 2. And at 7 p.m., TalkSport joins in with uh, kickoff. Same on Wednesday night as well. I'll be live at Old Trafford tomorrow night, live at St James Park on Wednesday night with kickoff 6 p.m. Talk Sports 2. Um, let's take you down to the pitch. A, uh, one of my best pals, actually, and a familiar voice to Talk Sport listeners, Paul Coit, does the honours at half time here at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Uh, he's got with him a uh, couple of uh, special guests from yesteryear. Two Spurs greats. Pat Jennings is the former keeper, is waiting to speak to him, former Northern Ireland keeper. And Martin Chivers, the former England striker, and of course, as both of them Spurs legends, uh, just waiting to speak to Coity pitch side. Both going to be paying their tributes to uh, Sir Bobby Charlton, as we have been doing all weekend on the Talksport Network. Alan Pardew, particularly uh, poignant when speaking about uh, Sir Bobby yesterday on the final word when I hosted the show with him on Talksport yesterday evening. Really enjoyed the show and some uh, fine words from Alan Pardew as uh, Sir Bobby Charlton's face is on the screen smiling face on the screen here the big screen here at the uh, Tottenham Hotspur Stadium and uh, richly deserved round of applause all rounds for the great man who will be missed not just in football circles but as a gentleman as well some really touching tributes paid at the weekend and uh, silence is observed as well on uh, Sunday certainly Aston Villa uh, showed the way they did it very well uh, yesterday uh, afternoon I have to say but here at Spurs they have uh, decided to interview some of the greats from yesteryear those who played alongside and or with the great Sir Bobby Charlton of course a World Cup winner who won everything with Manchester United let's hear those interviews now Martin great to see you this morning you know I guess as a young player starting up and looked up to him and then eventually he was got to play the wrong side. listening and hearing exactly what's being said on the pitch but uh, let's pay our own tribute at half time on talk sport it was four o'clock saturday afternoon i was hosting game day live it was announced that sir bobby charlton england world cup winner manchester united legend had died aged 86 and since then heartfelt and glowing tributes have poured into talk sport i've been scoring a lot of goals in the reserves and mad busby called me up to his office and he said right he says then um I'm playing you tomorrow in the first team. Words I'd been waiting to hear for, for ages and ages. I'm a professional footballer. I'm played in Man United's first team. That's the equaliser from Bobby Shoulder. England are the world champions. Bobby was Manchester United. You know that when they won the European Cup, who's going the strongest? Sir Bobby Charlton. Charlton! Never had a bad word to say about anybody, and of course, you know, throughout his career, he was never sent off, and I think that summed him up. Wasn't just a great player, he was a really great person as well. So this is a massive loss, not only to the Charlton family, but also to the world of football. The Munich air crash. His eight closest mates get wiped out in an air crash. You survive that. Literally weeks later, you're back out and you're back playing again. They think it's all over. The man come through that and still be one of the best players the world has ever had. And, and that's how great he was. Jeff Hurst went through and scored and, and suddenly the whistle went 
I got really emotional. I, I started thinking about when I was a little lad and I, I used to dream about being a footballer. In his 85th senior international, Charlton had notched his 45th goal. He was England's all-time top scorer. The World Cup 66, European Cup 68. You know, after what he'd been through, obviously, um, he'd be sadly missed, but never forgotten. Devastated, so, so sad. Um, he is an iconic figure around the world. A gentleman, an absolute ideal pro, a Manchester United, an England legend. His memory, his legacy, his name is timeless. Some wonderful words there from uh, from the start. Patrick Barkley, sports writer, Lou McCarry, uh, Roy Hodgson, Jim Rosenthal, Alan Mullery, Wayne Rooney, Michael Carrick, Alan Brazil, our very own, and Henry Winter as well, paying tribute to the late, the great, the legend and the gent. Sir Bobby Charlton on TalkSport over the weekend. Half time here at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Spurs leading Fulham by a goal to now second half coming up on game night. Let's get all the half time odds with Labrooks. Odds update on TalkSport with Labrooks. We play together. Terms and conditions apply. 18 plus begambler.org. So here's the latest on Spurs 1 Fulham nil. Both teams to score. Yes, it's 11 to 10. No, 6 to 4 on. Next goal scorer, Son to get another one. Uh, to get the second goal, four to one. Carlos Vinicius to score the second goal is nine to one. That was the latest odds with Labrooks. Play at labrooks.com, 18 plus B, gamblerware.org. Odds update on TalkSport with Labrooks. We play together. Terms and conditions apply, 18 plus B, gamblerware.org. Yeah, we're waiting for the players to come out for the uh, second half here at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. I just want to uh, go back and explain why I was uh, pulling a funny face when uh, Sam Matafay said Calvin Bassey, yeah, oh. handball, but he was in uh, it was a natural position. It's a grown man sliding along a floor. That is not a natural position, I'm afraid. Excuse me, I'll let you know that there a couple of that, that happens quite a lot on a Saturday night for me. I don't know about you. It's only since you've known Alex Crook. The, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, listen, I think the footballers are, are quite clever. I remember Stuart Pearce saying to me, you know that one where it's handball and then a player whips the, the ball, the hand that's handballed it behind his back as if to say I didn't mean it. I think it's one of those where he's going there, whatever part of the body he can get on the ball, he'll get on the ball, but then he'll, he'll get up and say, well, yeah, hit my arm, but it's, it's by my side and it's natural. For me, that's handball. I'm sorry. I, I, I disagree. I, I, I'm not giving a handball there. Um, I, I, I still think, Adrian, rightly or wrongly, I think the law states that the, the handball, for example, Chelsea, Arsenal, Liverpool, Everton is given. But I just think sometimes, I just thump, some, think sometimes the law has to get a level of intent into it. I really do. Ali, the law has to get some common sense into it. A hundred percent. And that's what I've seen. That's what I've been seeing, Adrian, for a long, long time. I just think the one thing that, that VAR and VAR has done without doubt is diminish the responsibility of the referee. And it is not allowing, or it is taking away situations where referees can use common sense and I just think it's quite sad, I really really do. I will I point out something else from the first half, there was a refereeing inconsistency from the weekend, men remember Connor Roberts was sent off for Burnley at Brentford, the first yellow was throwing a ball back onto the pitch to stop the play Mickey van der Ven did that very early in the half, referee did absolutely nothing. But that's my point Adrian I said to Sam before the game it is the inconsistency that is upsetting fans up and down the country more than anything you know we can be happy with rules we can have with regulations or we can be angry with them however all we're looking for is a bit of consistency from, from officials Spurs lead 1-0 Son with the goal second half about to get underway with TalkSport breakfast king Ali McCoyst alongside our chief football commentator Sam Matapay two changes for Fulham at half time Alex Iwobi is on for Andreas Pereira and Raul Jimenez is on for Carlos Vinicius at the start of a second half from which Fulham have to come back from a goal deficit underway with Tottenham in white shirts white shorts and socks attacking the goal away to our right and Fulham in that uh, greyish kit with a little pink hue pink trim and black shorts attacking the goal away to our left hand side and Ali McCoy, those changes, what impact will they have? Well, they need to find a goal from somewhere, don't they? Awobi's playing, looks up 
he's on the uh, Hoiberg at the moment so his job will be to get forward when they do get the ball they're just going to have to find a goal from somewhere a doggy who's got down the left hand side again pulled the ball towards the edge of the D it comes cannoning back off of William after it was played forward by Pedro Porro there was half faint climbs for a handball the ball broke to the right and again the ball's kicked by Castagna against the Richarlison who's been flying into blocks and challenges in an attempt to show willing really yeah. you can't, he's winning the ball back uh, absolutely do you know someone uh, uh, and you can't blame him for that at all Sam see if you're having a, a kind of rough time and a tough time the fans will stay with you 100% if they see that you are totally committed and giving and everything and clearly that's the impression that Richarlison is giving at this moment in time the Spurs have got a cracking record against Fulham the Cottagers have not beat them in the league for eight years no doubt that Fulham were the better side when the two met in the Carabao Cup albeit with much altered teams Spurs who have changed their style improved with more shots more touches in the opponent's box more of the ball more pressing more of everything that fans want to see this season without a huge overhaul but with a change in the dugout that has uh, allowed many of their flair players to express themselves and some of those who are on the fringes of the first team to be reintegrated here is James Madison who certainly has been given responsibility and the other thing that has impressed me about him is the the way in which he's inherited that Harry Kane number 10 jersey and it's bothered him very little for others that would be like a heavy weight on their shoulders wouldn't it He's not really that personality. Here is uh, Hoybier poking it out towards the far side. Taken by Richarlison. Doesn't get his pass right. Blocked by Castagna. A doggy then plays it against the same man. The Belgian doing well to stop a Spurs attack. Yeah, it looks very much like Polina and Lukic are, are sitting there as a two in front of the back four. And Wobie's in that kind of number 10 position. With the reads and William the left hand side him and his through the middle Sam yeah. pretty similar to the way they lined up in the first half Absolutely. just with different personnel, personnel. and uh, Raul Jimenez looking for his first top flight goal since March 2022 he certainly goes through a lot of work that's for sure and maybe Fulham will be hoping that he can be a platform from which to build Wobi did quite well last season I think for uh, Everton He's still looking for his first ever uh, Fulham goal. Van de Fen back to Romero. The press is on this time from Fulham and they've won it. Polinia into William, who's uh, spotted the run of Decor Dovery. Polinia came off badly in the challenge that initially won the ball back for Fulham. Decor Dovery's gone too wide and then has had to come back to the midpoint of the Tottenham half. And then Iwobi tracks and runs towards the edge of the centre circle where Tim Ream picks it up, plays it left into the path of William, they build again Tottenham Hotspur lead by a goal to nil the noise cacophonous inside this huge stadium that seats so many, 62,850 that was a, a good venue for the NFL the other week I'm on Talk Sport 2 foul by Kulisewski on Robinson, it was going to be a free kick midway inside Spurs territory Iwobi back to the centre circle and Calvin Bassey who nudges it into the path of Jao Polinia the ponytail Tim Ream plays it wide and then on to William William back to Ream once again Ream into midfield where Polinia looks to float the ball in behind the doggy and looks for Decor Dover Reed whose touch wasn't good enough to get hold of it it went under his foot and the doggy is allowed to recover in the left full back position what's in that Sam his touch is really poor it was a brilliant switch of play I felt from Polinia deserved a better touch from Decor Dover Reed it really should and he should have been in and goal getting a, some attempt at a finish here that was a poor touch such a brilliant precision pass from Palinia it needed to be met with the requisite quality he couldn't do so Lukic has it on the far side accused of handball referees allowed play on and Iwobi has taken it on moves across the halfway line literally running from right to left before releasing the ball to Willian and then in the centre circle Tim Ream plays it to Bassi who's under pressure from Madison 
game hasn't really caught light in the second half but there's a bit more intent about Fulham at the start of the second half than there was at the end of the first where they really just looked as if they needed to just reformat slightly playing out from the back now Fulham with uh, the squeeze on from Spurs where they play round that Robinson, Willian and then Robinson again who plays it out towards Raul Jimenez but it's a little bit behind him and floats out of play and Marco Silva comes out of his technical area I think he's been a little bit more encouraged by what he's seen in the yeah, first six minutes I, I definitely agree with you there I know there was possession it went out for a throw in but it was tidy enough playing the left hand side here involving Robinson, Willian and Jimenez they certainly started on the front foot front foot even Fulham look a little bit brighter Big Ange standing down there looking very smart tonight uh, hands in his uh, rain Mac standing on the edge of the uh, technical area sternly watching on as Kulisewski with a lovely little take and turn plays it square into Son space on the far side for Richarlison he gets under the ball and over the bar it goes and it was another good move for Spurs another good move that's created a chance and speaking to the Spurs fans at half time Ali one of their frustrations was is that they do craft a lot of chances but don't necessarily take them well we've seen it in the first half didn't they the one chance in particular was three or four and could have got a shot at goal and they didn't get a shot away at all at least in that, uh, that attack, they did get a shot away, albeit a, an average one from Richarlison. But again, really bright on the right-hand side from Kulisevsky and a lovely ball into Son. A doggy, it's not a great header. And uh, his clearance from the long ball forward by Leno means that he's snapping at the heels of Raul Jimenez. And a free kick is given against him because he was a little bit too aggressive as he tried to win it back. And he uh, had a little bite at his ankles caught the back of the Achilles of the Mexican and a free kick is given about 15 yards short of the D in the dead centre of the Spurs half 1-0 to Spurs and Fulham showing a little bit of fight to try and get back into this game it remains 1-0 and again Spurs going with that high line outside the box what's the benefit of that Ali? Well, it gives the goalkeeper a lot of space to see as well the only problem is there's a counter to it as well and some of the times they run it's a, it's a big area to, to leave but they're obviously have great confidence in their goalkeeper William who's going to try and deal with this set piece Tottenham's line is literally 10 yards from the ball yeah. right so they float it over the top looking for Paulinho it's headed into the air by Richarlison and then further clear of the second attempt and it goes towards the right fullback position floats out of play and goes out for a throw in level with the edge of the box it's like an obvious thing to say as well Sam but you know when you do keep a high line generally speaking you are no matter what the delivery is you're going to keep the ball further away from your goal it's an obvious thing to say but I can understand it the issue is if the attackers time their run to perfection the ball is drifted over the yeah. top there's more room for them to run into yeah, they've that's got away with it so far yeah that's where your goalkeeper obviously has to be very bright and switched on as well Leno uh, square to Bassi Bassi forward and then it's picked off by Hoybier and Son's in an onside position and Madison's joining now and slips it past the goalkeeper and he has his first goal in front of the Tottenham Hotspur fans of this stadium James Madison after another mistake by the Fulham defence playing out from the back the ball came back into Son's possession on the edge of the box by Hoybier he tucked it round the corner for Madison who was joining on the left side of the box and it was a simple calm composed finish and as a result Tottenham Hotspur lead by two goals to nil I've got to say, I, I actually can't believe what I'm seeing. I mean, it's a great finish. Is he going to be offside here? No, he's not. Is he? I think. No, he's not. The right back's playing him on. The right back's playing him on a mile. In fact, it's Bassett's playing him on. I'm going to tell you something. The goal was a complete replica, a complete replica of the first goal. It's got played into midfield. It's a poor ball. And it's on who's standing himself again in the middle of the pitch because the other centre back is in the left hand side and he can't get across again. It's the exact same as the first goal from Fulham's point of view it's criminal from Spurs' point of view they'll take it and I need to tell you it's a beautifully composed finish the Son's not offside even though there is no other defender between him and the goal because Bassi is off the pitch actually when the ball's played to him was he off so the pitch? His, so his entrance point is a judge to be on the touchline on the far side yep. but because he's so far back he's playing Son onside yeah 
still doesn't let them away with a poor quality. <laughs> it certainly I, tell doesn't. You, I, I, I mean, why would they? You talk, listen, they say it's madness, don't they? Say, make the same mistake more than once. That for me was a complete replica in terms of how to lose a goal. Bassey plays it into the middle of the park, it's intercepted, and because Bassey is on the right hand side of the defence, Tim Reams away at the other side, on the left hand side, they're actually leaving Son in the middle of the pitch alone. And again, we see the goal. It's a lovely finish, lovely time run, keeps himself on side, beautiful wee side foot. Emerson Royale has come on for a doggy as we reach the 55 minute mark and it's 2-0 to Tottenham Hotspur and uh, two goals that have been gifted really by Fulham and that's not something that you want to do when you have a problem scoring goals is start handing out generous gifts like that and Calvin Bassey unfortunately has been at the heart of both of them yeah he's played two heavy balls heavy handed balls in the middle of the park that said you know, there's still 35, 40 yards from the goal and your centre-back's miles away. William in towards the near post, flicked away by Van der Ven and he got in front of his goalkeeper there and almost caused him a bit of a uh, commotion. He flicked it in the end behind and away for a, another corner kick to Fulham. And uh, he just took charge, Van der Ven, despite the fact that maybe his goalkeeper called. He almost got a whack in the back of his head with two of Vicario's fists, but survived. And it's out for a corner which William will take, arcing towards the penalty spot. Van der Ven taking charge again. Son trying to bring it out of the sky and charge upfield, but Robinson will stop him from doing so. If you're Marco Silva and you've made plans at half-time of how you're going to get back in the game, you've seen your changes actually have a bit of an effect for 10 minutes, and then that happens, you're the architects of your own downfall once again. How frustrating is it? Oh, Sam, it, it, it drives you crazy, but at the same time, they've made the shit... Here's Castagna into the box of the far post is Jimenez who's great defending by Papsar he gets was. back in front of him and heads the ball away It certainly was So we're just going to see how frustrating it is Yeah, it's, you better believe it's frustrating However, to make the same mistake you know, and lose another goal play it in the middle of the park and your opposite centre-backs 15, 20 yards away from the centre-forward it, it's unforgivable really William back to Iwobi. Iwobi trying to send it through the centre. It's away by Romero. Picked up by Castagna, but Richarlison trying to win it. Castagna falling over in front of him. Didn't allow him to escape with the ball. And it breaks to halfway. It's uh, a disappointing evening for Fulham. Who haven't played at their best. There's no doubt about that. They're still struggling to find their rhythm from last season. They are lacking that focal point that Mitrovic provided them with. It's always going to be difficult. Oh dear. And Vicario's given the ball away to William on the edge of the area. And this may be a way back into the game. Not if Romero's got anything to say about it. He comes sliding across and makes a swashbuckling challenge, which sees the ball squirm out on the near side for a throw in. The Vicario getting a little bit overconfident there with his header on the edge of the box, which almost allowed Fulham back in. Well, he shouldn't have been there in the first place, Sam. He's just stayed in his lane and got it knocked back to him. Once he comes out, he's got to clear it, and then he tried to be clever with the with the header to the right back position. It was great covering, as you correctly said, from Romero. So tries to get it forward to Madison. He uh, doesn't get hold of that. It just takes a little nick off Castagna and runs through to Calvin Bassi. Back to Reem. There's space for Iwobi here, who's just left-sided of the centre circle. Played out to Lukic. Lukic now with some space on the far side, the right to Decordova Reem. It's helped to him by Castagna. He returns the ball to the Belgian, but Richarlison watching it, doing his diligent work, manages to intervene and then conspires to give it back again. Goes back to Lukic and then on to uh, Palinia, who's crossing to the boxes over the head of Kulisevsky. It's wide on the left now with William, who sets up Robinson, who's crosses deep, and it's too deep. It just spins off the turf and goes out on the far side, and it's away for a throw-in to Tottenham Hotspur, who are comfortable with their lead as we hit the hour mark. Live on Talk Sport, and they've uh, defended as well as they've attacked, really, Tottenham Hotspur at times. Yeah, Sharon particularly, we're just watching a replay of the one where he gets in to prevent the header, it's excellent defending, getting back into a dangerous area and mopping up. But I'm still, as you can probably hear, pretty bamboozled is probably the best word I could use at the way Fulham have defended both those goals. It's just remarkable, absolutely remarkable. Papsar's now gone down in the middle of the Tottenham half of the field. I think he needs a little bit of treatment. And uh, 
And some good news that is coming out of the Tottenham training camp that not only is Brennan Johnson back from his injury, but Rodrigo Bentancor is on his way soon as well. He's not available for tonight and won't be maybe for a week or so, but he's certainly going to be involved in a not too distant future. Oliver Skiff is going to be the immediate replacement for Pat Sarr, who I think is going to have to be replaced here, which is a disappointment for him because he's played particularly well. Posta Coglu has allowed him to flourish where if you remember rightly when he came into the team under Antonio Conte Conte almost threw his arms up and said well this is all I've got which, yeah, which didn't is, inspire it's confidence it's really an ideal confidence booster when you get that kind of thrown at you no I think you're just you're talking about a different level of man management aren't you really I mean even I, I can guarantee you right now even if Posta Coglu thought of that about his player he wouldn't say it that's for sure he might say to the player you're maybe not in my plans or whatever but he would not do that Skip is on to replace Pat Sarr. And Harry Wilson, fresh from a good international break with Wales, is going to come on and he is going to replace De Cordova Reid. Fulham fans would like his Welsh form to inspire him to produce his best for Fulham. He's coming on with uh, those frosted tips in his hair. Am I right in assuming that many <laughs> moves ago that was a hairstyle that you once sported? <laughs> that's pure. I mean, that's you're, you're, you're actually correct in your, your assessment. However, there's no getting away from it. It's pure. Bringing that up. <laughs> Just sitting here delighted you didn't go for the pair of Yeah, when I was a, uh, a, a wee whippersnapper, I had a... Uh, I think there's a Panini sticker book with uh, <laughs> a wee little Ali McCoy sticker with the, with the blonde frosted tips. Here is uh, Pedro Porra out towards the right-hand side. Kulisewski, low ball in towards the edge of the six-yard box, steered away by Bassi, and then picked up by William and taken away by Fulham. It was another good break, a quick, smart break from Tottenham Hotspur, and another chance as well, which they haven't capitalised on. Yeah, good defending, though, from Bassi. It really was. His positional sense was excellent. Kulosevsky, good break down the right hand side just to play it across but his positioning was very good Van der Ven, his positioning is he always very he good apart, Sam, I'll tell you I like the look of him 34 yeah, million quid rising to 43 from Wolfsburg seems a good deal at the moment yeah. so does the one for Madison who skipped past three challenges moved into the inside right position swung the ball out to the far side maybe got a little bit excited and it was too heavy for Richarlison but he lights up the place, doesn't he? James Aye. Madison with his body swerves and his tricks. A lovely little nutmeg as well, which didn't go unnoticed. But he's a little bit heavy in the final pass to Richarlison. But I think we can cut him a bit of slack, that's for sure. We were talking about Van de Ven and what a catcher he was. He was the fastest Bundesliga defender last year, running at 22.3 miles per hour at his peak. You can actually see it. Yeah. Great recovery speed for a defender. What a bonus that is to have. It's difficult as well if you're a centre forward, isn't it, when you realise that someone oh, has yeah. got the beating of you across the ground. Yeah. It's not a good feeling that. And I used to feel it quite often. <laughs> <laughs> I'm weighed down by those frosted tips. <laughs> Six four on the clock. You're listening to Talk Sports, Sam Manderface and Ali McCoy. Ali doing uh, double shift today and he's going to do breakfast tomorrow morning from six o'clock. When you wake up, he'll be there with Andy Townsend. And those two will bring you the best breakfast show on the dial tomorrow morning from 6 a.m. Make sure you're there when you're on your way to school, work, college, wherever you're going tomorrow morning. If you're travelling and if you're uh, up and about early, just have it on in the kitchen. You can even ask Alexa to play Talk Sport if you've got a smart speaker. And you can... Uh, also listen on our app which is available to download just go to your app store or your google play store and download the Talksport app you can flick between the two stations but you can also flick over to virgin radio if you want a bit of music and have chris evans from 6 30 every single morning and talk radio with nicola thorpe and J jeremy carl in the mornings too is available for you all our stations on that talk sport app download it and there's a bucket load of entertainment for you 
65 on the clock. It's Tottenham Hotspur 2, Fulham 0, live on Talk Sport. And it's Christian Romero forward to Son, round the corner for Porro, who's out of position now as the ball comes back with William. It's nudged through to uh, Raul Jimenez, who nutmegs Van de Ven, but there was an offside flag up in the first phase, and as a result, it's going to be a Tottenham ball. I think Awobi just slipped off seed there. He's a little bit unlucky. But he's got a problem, definitely. Marco Silva, how are they going to get back into this game now? He's going to have to start gambling a little bit, throwing one or two players forward with 25 minutes or so to go. Tottenham look like such a settled team, don't they? I noticed that Eric Dyer was linked with Bayern Munich this week. It's difficult to see a route back in with the performances of Romero and Van de Ven and the fact that they don't have European or Cup football until after the new year. It means there's less need for rotation, which means there's hardly a look in for anybody else who's not in the established 11. Here is uh, Richarlison over on the far side. Infield it goes to Madison again. Madison on to uh, Son, who's trying to get the ball around the corner, doesn't quite manage to do that. And tussling with uh, Harry Wilson, and then Bassi almost makes a mistake again. There's a challenge by Richarlison, which the referee doesn't punish. It goes out of play over on the far side, and it's away for a Tottenham throw, quickly taken and uh, Madison does well just to wait for it to come across his body they then smother him nab it Lukic takes it clear it goes up to halfway and Harry Wilson tries to switch from right to left finding Robertson Robinson controls it on his right knee and then nudges it out to the touchline with his left William takes over you can tell by the booze that he's on the ball and then he plays a 1-2 with a Wobie gets to the byline produces a cross away by Van der Fen and then it comes back into midfield and Paulinia for Fulham and remains 2-0. The thing about Tottenham is, is they've offered Fulham very few chances. Yeah. Just the one from the set play, wasn't it? Corner came across. And Lucario made a great save to his left-hand side. Apart from that, there's not been an awful lot of trouble for the goalkeeper. Tottenham usually come good right at the end of their home games. They've left it late uh, in their matches here, in the last two anyway, to have secured victory. And it's stoppage time. They've done it by some distance already tonight, and they should be on the march again here with Richarlison towards the edge of the area. Son leaves it for Kulisevsky, just right of the D, moves into the box, looks to feed it out wide to Hoybier, half clear by Fulham. And again, they've got to the edge of the box. They've maybe had one pass too many and just don't quite have that finishing power. No, I agree with you. Having said that, a lot of credit must go to Robinson there on the left-back position for Fulham, who stood his ground. Saw the overlap there from Hoiberg, stood his ground and intercepted the pass. But you're right, it's another opportunity going for Tottenham. Well, you just think that uh, tonight probably would be perfect if Richarlison could uh, have a good second half and come up with a goal. And I think... Uh, a top performance for him and a, a couple of strikes are the only thing that's missing in the perfect starts of the season for Ange Postacoglu. His team is still unbeaten and uh, going back to the top of the table. Okay, he's lucky there, Hoiberg. It was a free kick, but he took a kind of heavy touch and allowed William to nip it. Son trying to get in behind Bassi. Bassi does enough to strong arm him off the ball and then plays it square. And it's not the best of uh, clearances by Castagna. Madison putting pressure on Paulinia. Paulinia, who signed a long-term contract after the debacle of his attempted move to Bayern Munich. And uh, he gives away a throw, and then he fouls Madison, and that's going to be a free kick on the right-hand side. He hasn't picked up his customary yellow card yet. João Paulinia. Stole 20 to go. Every chance that he will do between now and the end does create another opportunity for Spurs from a set piece yeah my list he just flicks one round the corner leaves a little bit on him not a lot Holmes row form not great not one away from home since the opening day of the season at Everton and they were a little bit fortunate there they haven't been great tonight either now coming up against, at this moment in time, the best team in the league. Madison to take the free kick on the right-hand side. 
and we've got four white shirts just inside the penalty area and Richarlison just outside it he's breaking to get into it now and so is Son as the ball goes in towards Son he flicks it and it goes through the six yard box and Romero doesn't capitalise at the far post yeah it's a good delivery again Manish have whipped in with a little bit of pace that curling one away from the goalkeeper just behind the defenders Son arrives gets a flick on it but nobody can well nobody can run the back post to take advantage of it I love the fact that uh, Madison you could lip read him say what a ball yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> doesn't like a bit of self-belief is it <laughs> to be fair it's never to argue with him <laughs> You're listening to Tottenham Hotspur 2, Fulham Mill, Talk Sport. With now, and don't forget, with now, you can stream all the Sky Sports action like Tottenham versus Fulham live right now for 11 99 no contract. Search now, sports. And remember, tomorrow night, we've got Champions League action for you, and Wednesday as well, and Thursday, Europa League action. Friday night, we're back with Tottenham again. Adrian was listing the games we've already done of Tottenham Hotspur this season. Their last game against Luton was live on Talk Sport. This game is on Talk Sport. Their next game against Chelsea is on talk sport after the Palace game on Friday night and their game after that against Wolves away from home is live on talk sport he was right when he said talk Tottenham it's not often wrong that Phil I'll tell you <laughs> huge number of Tottenham games to come and I'll tell you what right at this moment in time they're the games you want to be at oh without doubt without doubt they a great watch at the moment they really are Sasalukic coming off and he's been replaced by Harrison Reed in midfield who had started all eight Premier League games up until tonight last season uh, he was very good I thought very effective alongside Polina in the heart of midfield I was a bit surprised that he uh, was left out this evening it may well be that he hasn't been as good as he was last campaign but yeah certainly got something about him he tries to nudge the ball down with his first touch towards the right hand side I, was, I did the Barcelona game last night talking about great first touches did you see that story Boy, 17, year old. 17 years Honestly. of age he's played 8 minutes for the B team before <laughs> last night comes off the bench and scores within 23 seconds oh. <laughs> talk about dream debut Robinson down the left into uh, William back to Robinson once again here is uh, Tim Ream. And then Calvin Bassi under pressure from uh, Madison Yeah, they're City hungry, back. aren't they? You can see it. Tottenham hungry, whether it's Shaw and Madison, Richarlison, and forward areas. They have the ball again over on the far side. There was an offside play that went up, and it looks like Harry Wilson's got a problem. He's gone down, holding his right knee. Uh, or is it his calf that's the problem? As soon as that ball went out over on the far side, he sunk to the floor and he thought he's got a problem. He just... Did it just go up? Did someone land on him? No, it's the way he landed that was the problem. Yeah. Ah, no, it might have been a little flick of the studs on the knee from uh, Emerson no, uh, Royale. Be, I think you're right. It can be very, very painful. I think he's just caught him with the back of his studs there. Seems to be OK, though. He's back on his feet again after rolling around over on the far side for a little while. Like you say, it can be very painful. Get that uh, deep freeze spray out. Sort you out for a little while. 64 minutes on the uh, clock. 74 minutes on the clock. You're listening to Talk Sport. And we're live tonight at the uh, Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. The golden cockerel away to our right, which looms over the lip of the roof. Yeah, on the top of the south stand is shining brightly in the night sky and Tottenham once again taking the spotlight they are going top of the Premier League and I just wonder what you think after having seen as much as you have of them this season they can achieve this campaign I still think the best opportunity of a trophy is one of the Cups I'll be honest with you Vicario going out towards the perimeter his penalty area to uh, clean the ball and get it high up over the halfway line after the ball was played in behind the Tottenham defence. Can they make the top four? On current four of you, you've got to say yes. As I say, it's still early in the season. I wouldn't be really getting carried away till certainly the turn of the year, February. We can have a, a proper discussion about it, Sam. At this moment in time, I think sports fans should just sit back and enjoy what's happening. And then we can have a conversation again at the turn of the year, but 
He should have brought Madison the... robs Bassi inside the penalty area, tries to take it on his own, comes back to Richarlison, and then his shot takes a deflection, does it, and goes behind. Well, they've had another aberration at the back, and Calvin Bassi has again been guilty. And uh, Madison almost profited with a second goal. The ball was played to Bassi inside the area. His heavy touch allowed Madison, who has that hunger, that desire to chase everything down, to win possession. And again, they didn't make the most of it. Sam Bassi just takes a heavy touch again. You know, Ma Madison's actually gone for the exact same finish that he scored with earlier on for the second goal. And it's a casual, cool, collected side foot to the goalkeeper's left. It gets blocked that time. But again... You know, Calvin Bassi's wanting too much time on the ball. You do not get time on the ball at this level. Is this because he's played for Rangers, gone to Ajax, and the Premier League is just that little bit faster? Well, this is the best league on the planet. Make no mistake about it. We're the best players on the planet, I think. And I think a lot of people would agree with me. So you've got to be razor sharp mentally and physically. And he's just, on two or three occasions, been caught out. The, the passes into midfield can happen, right? But that in particular for me is where you maybe underestimate the pace of the opposition. William. On to Robinson down the left side. Tries to get the better of Pedro Porro, but again, he stands firm. And I think a lot of people questioned his defending when he first joined yeah. the club, but he seems to have uh, sharpened up in that regard, as well as his forward players. The ball goes into the box and Van de Ven leaves it for his goalkeeper and does that's, so well. That's great communication. That really is, because... The centre-half went for it, Van der Ven looked for it, and I think he's going to head it, and he must get a shout from Vicario there. Drops the, old sh the head into the shoulders, and lets the ball run through, all about communication there. Clip forward by Van der Ven into uh, Madison. Madison just short of halfway, 77 on the clock. It's 2-0 to Tottenham Hotspur. And Tottenham's next fixture is against Crystal Palace on Friday night, live on Talk Sport. We will be there for that. It's a huge week of football. And uh, we're looking forward to it. This is Romero on the edge of the box. Playing it out wide towards Porro, the right fullback, who cannons it against the shins of uh, Willian. He's 35 years of age now. He's returned for the last six games after a fitness problem at the beginning of the season. It's in games like this when you're 36 and you're up against the team as sprightly and as intense as Tottenham that you do start to feel a little bit older than your years. Yeah. Having said that, you know, he's looked all right. He's looked one of the better feeling players for me on the left-hand side, Willian. They haven't had a lot to, to shout about, but he's, he's been OK. Son, on halfway is Pedro Porro. It's Tottenham 2, Fulham 0, live on TalkSport. For the latest odds, you can head to Labrooks, where right now you can get odds on the next team to score, the third goal this evening. Tottenham 7-5, to five, Fulham 3-1, to one, no third goal at 13-10. to 10. That's all thanks to Labrooks, that even plus be gamble aware. But Tottenham on the attack, an attack started by a brilliant challenge from Oliver Skip. Uh, Tottenham are running the ball out of play on the far side because Richarlison has gone down. That slows their momentum going forward. Richarlison's claiming he's got a head injury. And he's slowly getting back to his feet. So the, any momentum that they did have is petering out. But Richarlison is now back to his feet. Did they need to stop it? I'm not sure they did really. No, but listen, you can't take you can't take a chance with head injury. I, I, I think you're right. I think he went down. I think the referee Anthony Taylor thought there was a head knock. Not a lot going on between the two of them. Him and Wilson shake hands. So an answer to Wesley, yes, but you're better safe than sorry. Indeed. Ange Postacoglu is about to make uh, a couple of changes, uh, three changes, in fact, down in front of us. We're going to see uh, Valise, Lo Celso and Brennan Johnson in the next few moments for Tottenham Hotspur. He doesn't like sitting around on his international breaks or sitting on his hands. The first few days are OK, you know what it's like, he said this week. You're enjoying the rest, a bit like the rest of us. You know, you're the first two days of the international break, everyone's having fun, aren't they? And then all of a sudden you start thinking, when's the next game? <laughs> uh, ball played out towards his right-hand side. Robinson picks it up. And a swish of the rain, Mac once again from Ange Postacoglu. Shows his frustration as Tottenham have given away possession. He's about to bring on three new players to just liven up 
Tottenham in the last 10 minutes of this game maybe send this crowd home even happier but they look like a team that are full of belief at this moment in time they may be uh, lacking a ruthlessness that uh, certainly might still be there could they have one Harry Kane in their ranks but they're going to switch out James Madison Richarlison and Son for Valise. Johnson and Lo Celso for the final 10 minutes and I suppose that's the benefit of being 2-0 up is it? Without doubt, absolutely and I've got to say I'm a little bit disappointed in Fulham because you're expecting a reaction from them Sam and it's just the game's kind of petering out in front of our very eyes they've got 10 minutes left to have a go at it but Ange Postecoglou has obviously decided he's wants, he wants to freshen things up and fair, fair play to him for doing that I just wonder as Graham Scott puts up the ball Danny Plymouth whether or not it will be an opportunity now for Fulham to just it might just encourage them thinking that you've taken off some of these players let's, let's see if he yeah. can uh, withstand the late storm with 10 minutes plus stoppage time to go Aleko Belize is coming on to replace Madison Son is off and so is uh, Richarlison as we go into the last few moments of the game and uh, Madison, I think, deserves a special mention, bearing in mind that he scored his first goal and Son his 50th goal at the stadium. Yep. Both excellent finishes. Both poor defensively. A lovely side foot finish in Madison and equally the opening goal from Son was beautiful execution. You know, I made the comments, but really poor defending from Fulham and I stand by it. And I just take nothing away from the quality of finishes. And the two of them doing their uh, arrow celebration, their bullseye celebration, was uh, the picture you'll probably see on the back page of some of your papers tomorrow morning. And remember, you'll be able to have your say straight after the conclusion of this game with uh, Jamie and Jason, 03717, double two, double three, double four. The sports bar open for business. I'm sure Tottenham fans will be straight on the blower, giving the boys a call. It's the best place to have your say on national radio. It's Jamie O'Hara and Jason Cumney coming up straight after we finish. And I'll be trying to bring you some reaction from uh, Ange Postacoglu and from Marco Silva. Uh, changes for uh, Fulham as well. Off uh, has uh, gone Jao Polinia and on has come Tom Kearney for the last 10 minutes of the game. Here is Tim Ream deep inside his own half back to Calvin Bassi out towards the far side seven minutes to go here is Iwobi Iwobi out to Castagna in towards Wilson okay, and he's going to get there first and then Wilson's attempt to volley and send the ball out to the wide left is met by Kulisevsky it's Tottenham who have the ball it's a little bit disjointed Tottenham Bassi steps in to get there ahead of Valise and now they have possession Fulham on this near side the left it's Robinson moving forward trying to cut the ball infield plays it out wide to the left Robinson's cross is a good one and across comes the defender Emerson Royale and initially does well to intervene and then almost fumbles it in the right fullback position after coming in from the left and then Kulisevsky with a little nutmeg on William oh, 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 keeping the ball beautifully <laughs> and then <laughs> he himself gives it away it breaks to him and it's inside the area it's a brilliant save by Vicario and Raul Jimenez, who has waited 18 months from a top-flight goal, has missed another huge chance. It's a great opportunity for Fulham to get on the score sheet. And Vicario has made another great save. Yeah, you know something, Sam, I'm looking at that. And the attempted finish looked like a finish from somebody who actually didn't believe they were going to score, actually yeah. hoped they were going to score. Kenny, William, now they have up the tempo. And it comes through to Iwobi, edge of the area, right footed shot blocked by Lacelso. Spoons into the air, collected far side by Brennan Johnson, who's tripped by Castagna. It's going to be a free kick in the left fullback position. Lacelso did really well there, getting back to the chance for Jimenez. Um, when he takes a touch, I think he's got to drive it with his instep. He goes for the, the safer option of a kind of side foot finish back across the goalkeeper, Vicario. Lovely pass, I've got to say, from Wilson, really was. And he just tries to side foot it across the goalkeeper. As you see it, I just think he's got to put his foot through it and drive it down at the goalkeeper's feet or to his right hand side. 
it was a kind of safe attempted finish as I would describe it it's almost like I've just got to get this on target yes, exactly it's interesting uh, Picario is going to go to the book here for uh, time wasting but it was interesting as well watching that play you know all eyes were on Kulisewski because he just nutmegged Willian and then moved the ball forward then lost the play but the reason there was space out on that far side the left is because Emerson Royale came yeah. previously made a tackle and hadn't got back into position Tottenham had possession inside the uh, centre circle played out to the right and Kulisewski Robinson drags him to the ground it's a, for a throw in now earlier on I asked you what you thought that uh, Tottenham Hotspur could achieve and you said you weren't going to have a conversation with me till after Christmas yep what if I told you that the last 23 teams to have started the season this well had finished in the top four uh, would you then say that the Tottenham had to finish in the top four because that's what form would suggest they are oh for, man, form suggests they're the best team in the country at the moment they're in top four okay. you've got to say and the fact that I believe we're going to have a proper league this year and by that I mean I think Villa will take points off the top teams I think Newcastle can take points off the top teams Brighton will certainly take points off the top teams I wouldn't say it's wide open but I think this season more than any there is capable, the, the top teams that include Manchester City Liverpool and Arsenal are more than capable of dropping points that you would normally think they would pick up Kenny wins a free kick on halfway but he rushed taking it so that Anthony Taylor wants it pulled back and they'll reset it so top four yeah we, the game top four yeah, I think they can sneak into fourth I do yeah okay. there you are what if I told you by the way you've got me going four months early right now because I said I wasn't going to after <laughs> Christmas so <laughs> there's nothing like going early is there <laughs> You know me. Uh, <laughs> that's my trademark. Here's Keith Kearney down the left-hand side, combining with Raul Jimenez. Gets a shot away, but again, it's tame and it's into the arms of Vicario. What if I told you that the last four times that Spurs have started this well, they'd won the division? Well, I, I would guess the last team was clearly what 1960-61. Yeah, but also when they've been in the division below and started this well, they've gone on to win that as well. So two first divisions and one and two second divisions. Well, I'm sticking my neck out and telling you right now it won't happen for the first day. <laughs> there you go. Wow. I'm getting that look for That's that man early. on the left hand side. That's <laughs> early. You've gone early yes. now. I've decided to go early on that one. I've that drawn was a, you into it. There's my pre-Christmas one on that one. <laughs> Here's Raul Jimenez chesting the ball down. Across comes Romero, smashing it forward. Kulisewski down the right and then uh, oh, you know that some managers when the ball comes to their feet they flick it up juggle with it and give it back to the uh, he's not one of those <laughs> tell you right now he's not one of those big Ange Ange bent down like me yeah. <laughs> I think he's very much a side foot merchant Ange he's not getting involved in any keepy yeah. up stuff he looked as if he uh, he looked as if he had uh, he bent down in instalments there here is uh Harrison Reid back with Fulham inside the penalty area it's cleared away enough over the halfway line 2-0 Tottenham Hotspur lead and they're going back to the top of the Premier League they're continuing to cast off their Spursy tag and James Madison saying it to uh, one of our reporters the other week actually we're not Spursy anymore and it's going to be a win that takes them top Ange Postacoglu has always maintained that it would take two to three trading windows for him to get the squad that he wants. Yeah. I think that's fair, don't you? It's whether, it's whether we're giving it nowadays, of course, that's the question. And they've just appointed a new director of football in Johan Langer from Aston Villa and uh, Scott Munn, the new chief football officer. There's been a bit of restructuring behind the scenes. And certainly Ange has restructured them on the pitch as well. For Fulham who uh, are going to lose again on the road they find themselves in a situation where they've won the ball high up on the edge of the Tottenham penalty area Wilson's taken it on now Spurs have quickly got back into shape but here's Harrison Reed right side swings across into the centre away by Van der Fen and then picked up by Lo Celso and then away brilliantly by Tottenham who now counter-attack with Lo Celso he's got space out wide on his left for Brennan Johnson Belize wants it played through the centre but he's running an offside position and when he picks the ball up they uh, hesitate to put the flag up and eventually it does go up it was so obviously offside and the reason for him not sticking the flag up there would be got a clue mm. have not got a clue seven minutes did you say of added time at the end of the 90 
Really? Seven? I'm a bit surprised by that. Andy and Ali back on breakfast tomorrow. Jim and Simon follow them. How good was Martin O'Neill this morning? Live tomorrow night, Champions League action involving Arsenal. We have the European action Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday night this week. Premier League back Friday, Saturday. And Sunday we're round the grounds on the Sunday session. It's all action stuff on the home of football. The biggest sports radio station in the world, Talk Sport. 91 minutes on the clock, seven are confirmed as the added minutes. Vicario, deep inside his own half. Spurs content to keep hold of the ball and play out time now. Fulham, what is their ambition this season? I mean, it's well, very no, difficult to sort of up, overachieve on what they did last year. No, I, I think last year's kind of what they are. I think that's the best, to be honest with you. I, I really do. They've been well beaten tonight. They really have. A little bit disappointed. I mean, a couple of chances in the first half, particularly ahead that we spoke about. But they've not really started the first five ten minutes of the second half okay Sam but listen if you're going to defend the way they defend you know and, and take the ball off the goalkeeper in the two centre half split and then leave and lose it and leave the centre forward in the middle of the goal himself I, I, I would suggest they might continue to have problems but having said all that I still think they'll be okay cause, you know they're, they're definitely better than I think three or four teams in the league and that's the first uh achievement on the to-do list for Footland at the beginning of any season isn't it stay in the league here's Kulisevsky down the right hand side does well to get beyond Ream Ream tussles within the ball spills into the path of Anthony Robinson Tottenham Hotspur and their manager about to make history it's going to be the best managerial start ever in the Premier League played 9-1-7 drawn two and two points clear at the top of the Premier League a better start than uh, Mike Walker and Goose Hiddink. Here's the ball to the far side though for Fulham and Wilson pulls the trigger and blocked by Emerson Royale. The ball spills to Brennan Johnson and now Tottenham turn defence into attack at rapid speed and Johnson's going forward through the centre. Emerson Royale cuts in field, dispossessed by Harrison Reid and now Iwobi can take the ball to the halfway line. They just lack a confidence in front of goal, Fulham. Yeah can see it and it's evident it's something you can fix particularly easily as well well you, I, I know it's an easiest thing to say it's an obvious thing to say but it's factually correct you miss the big fella that's away to Saudi Arabia don't you Mitrovic's goals and, and selling him from under their feet just before the start of the season doesn't help does it no and you can say what you like it's not a good message to send out either the way it was done correct Reed on halfway for Fulham who know they're beaten here Robinson challenges with Pedro Porro who gets a little kick on the ankle for his trouble there's Anapla on this near side and William takes it infield meanders forward and there's a clip over the top towards the right and running forward to try and meet it is Castagna it's too heavy for him and goes out for a goal kick it's a little bit unlucky that Brennan Johnson just got caught ball watching a little bit and allowed the run there from Castagna couldn't pick him out though William what did you make of the Brennan Johnson move to Tottenham Hotspur is that a move yeah. where you think yeah. he'll be out of flourish yeah I, re I really do I think there's improvement in him I think there's potential in him and I actually think he's now a club that will shoot I don't mean you know Forrest went a club that will shoot him he did exceptionally well there but I think he's at a club that will shoot him Reid the Fulham out to Castagna Castagna sees it back to his goalkeeper Bert Leno who actually hasn't been able to display it too much tonight but has been a very good acquisition for Fulham since he went there he's a good goalkeeper into uh, Robinson Kearney the Tottenham fans are singing their songs they are top spot Tottenham and they look like Super Spurs and under Postacoglu and they look like football connoisseurs but they've left a big gap for Harry Wilson to run into and he's been fed by Iwobi through the centre of the pitch he goes Emerson Royal trying to get back at him and he sits there in time to stop and block the shot from Wilson and repel 
the attempted effort from the Welshman, who again probably took too many touches. Oh, you better believe he did, Sam. He's got to hit it early. It's a well worked move. He's got to pull the trigger early. He takes a good touch. The defender's not catching him. He's not getting back to him. We spoke about the pace that he has. Ricky van de Ven, but that was a real opportunity. That's a disappointment for Fulham. Well, the one thing I will say about Tottenham is that they've given away a couple of chances towards the end of the game when it's, yeah. it seems done and dusted. The other teams will punish. You better believe, yeah. I mean, they deserve the victory, as I said, but you're, you're spot on to mention that, you know, against a, a better opposition, a more lethal opposition in terms of forward play, they will get punished for that, there's no doubt. And they'll have to take those chances that come their way when they get them. 90 seconds remaining. Live on Talk Sport. And uh, Tottenham Hotspur, who uh, I think they've been inspired by Ange Postacoglu. There's a lot more sort of fighting for the cause than we saw last season under uh, yeah. the very cold Antonio Conte. Yeah, absolutely. You can see it. There's a, a greater belief, Sam. There's just a. Do you know what? There's just a better feeling about the whole place, to tell you the truth. Lo Celso, back to goal, tries to turn. He played for Argentina in the break. He hasn't played too many minutes for Tottenham this season. He played 18 minutes in the second game that Argentina played in the international break. Emerson Royale floats it back to uh, Christian Romero. And then he nudges it left, where it's collected by uh, Van de Ven. He's under pressure from Raul Jimenez. And then Vicario, the player out towards this near side. It remains 2-0 to Tottenham Hotspur, who are going top of the Premier League. And they're, they're coming forward again with Romero, playing it into Emerson Royale. His pass forward was uh, not the best. It was behind Belize. He looks a little bit raw still, doesn't he? Aleko Belize, who made his Spurs debut against Liverpool, came off the bench against Luton. He's a under-20 striker from Rosario Central. certainly part of the backup team to uh, Son and the rest well no wonder the Tottenham fans like this fella and Foster Coglu has made the best start to a Premier League career by any manager ever it preserves Tottenham's unbeaten record and means they end the week top of the Premier League again it's remarkable to think that Spurs lost their best player in the summer you'd never have noticed Fulham lost theirs too and it's abundantly clear it's a fourth defeat of the season for them but it's victory inspired by Son and Madison and a couple of sloppy bits of defending from Calvin Bassey which has generated three points for Tottenham who have beaten Fulham by two goals to nil well gone are the days of Spurs being booed off by their own fans here gone are the days when Spurs were considered boring They've got so much about them. Smiles all around as James Madison waves to the crowd. One of the goal scorers tonight. Spurs, resolute in defence. Tough in the tackle. Even when they made a mistake, they were quick to recover. More flair than a vintage trousers shop as well. Nine games into a 38-game season. They've beaten Liverpool and United. They've drawn away to Arsenal. Seen off the also-rans comfortably as well. Make no mistake, Spurs are good. As Ange Postacoglu goes onto the field to shake the hand of every single one of his players here tonight. And he will salute the fans as well. Finally, Ali McCoyst, at this stadium, these fans are getting what they've always wanted, a team that can entertain them and a team that can win while they're entertaining them. Absolutely. Adrian, you know, I said to Sammy, or just at the end of the commentary, I don't know what you think yourself, I just think there's a different vibe about the place, a different feeling about the place. You know, you mentioned the word belief, that, that's the one thing that... Hans Postecoglou and his team at this moment in time are installing in the fans and in, and in the players. I mentioned they just look at. I'm not going to get carried away because they've had a great start, but they do look at this moment in time a different animal. You know, they're, they're winning games they should win. They're winning games that they sometimes wouldn't win. 
and uh, everything in the garden at this moment in time is rosy. There'll be sterner tests ahead, be sure of that, you can absolutely guarantee that. But enjoy the moment, Spurs fans, absolutely so you should. You've got a team that are entertaining you, deservedly winning games of football, and, and, and they're looking the real deal. And in my opinion, I'll probably get a lot of stick for saying it again. They look as though they've got one of the best players in the country at this moment in time. You're talking about James Madison. That's you're, exactly you're, right. You're on breakfast tomorrow at 6 a.m. Your 6 a.m. club's now the 6 a.m. James Madison fan club, it isn't it? It will be. And I, I think my sidekick over there who's working at the game, Andy Townsend, will agree with me. We'll have a good chat on James Madison. He's thoroughly enjoying his football. He's enjoying the freedom to go and express himself. You know, and he looks. he, he just looks the player that we all know he can be. Well, Spurs are on fire. I wonder if the rest of the Premier League is terrified. The South stand away to our right. Steep banks of Spurs fans all singing and dancing. They're absolutely loving it right now. It's been so long since the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium and even before then, White Hart Lane has been like this. Really thoroughly enjoying it. Sam Malface is throwing shapes. Why? This is the song they played in the dressing room at Kenilworth Road the other week when I was outside the door and I was asking Hans Postecoglou about it. I said, are you playing Dolly Part? And he went, why would you say that, mate? I went, well, it's more your generation than theirs. <laughs> By the way, he's Australian. <laughs> yeah, he said that. <laughs> We're a bit of Welsh. Listen, only now when they're winning games, top of the table, can you get away with playing Ireland's in the stream after beating Fulham by two goals to nil. <laughs> Listen, whether you think they're serious or not in the title race, I think we all believe they're serious in the top four race, Tottenham Hotspur. Yeah. But they're a positive. At least they're making a challenge. You know, City have lost two games already. Let's not forget that. And I just mentioned there, Spurs, a little bit fortunate to beat Liverpool, but they beat Liverpool. They beat Man United yes. comfortably. They drew away to Arsenal, possibly with a better side in that game as well. So. I couldn't, uh, yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. So all, all the signs, all the telltale signs are good. And I actually think it will suit them. If my prediction is correct, that I think the league will be slightly tighter this year and, and, and City and Arsenal and Liverpool will, will drop points against the likes of Spurs, against the likes of Villa, against the likes of Newcastle and Brighton and the odd game here and there. It's going to be tight and I think it will suit Spurs. Do they have a, a, an opportunity of finishing the top four? And current for them, you've got to say absolutely without a doubt. Time will tell. I still don't, you know, I still think there's a lot of hard work and a lot of, you know, injuries and suspensions ahead of them. I look, I look at their bench. Is it as strong as the teams above them, above them in the league? I, I, I don't think so. And you would hope they've got one or two injury problems, one or two players coming back. But listen, you better believe they're in with a chance of finishing top four. I still think the best opportunity of winning something would be a cup. And I think that if you think if you asked every Tottenham fan in the stadium made, would they settle for a you know a cup final appearance and perhaps a cup, but you did bite your hand off. Ali, have a great breakfast show tomorrow morning. Looking forward to it. Have a good night's sleep as well. (laughs) (laughs) Off you go, son. Thank Uh, you. They're serenading you with uh, Ange Ball instead. Uh, which they love to sing here now. Kick off from six tomorrow evening, live from Old Trafford. It's Champions League night, but it's also the first United home game since the legends of Bobby Charlton left us. That's 6 p.m. Talk Sport 2 tomorrow. Ali McCoy, as I say, back on breakfast tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. I'm going to join him.